Hello everyone, I'm Ken Ichiomichi from NEC. Today, I'm going to discuss how to solve flag test at open source project. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I contributed to multiple open source projects on my career like Kubernetes, OpenStack, and Linux kernel. In open source projects, my role is always to solve bugs and create a debugging tool to investigate issues easily. For example, I created crash dump tool in Linux kernel community. I was a QA pro project lead of OpenStack QA projects, and now I am an approver of testing area in Kubernetes community. Here is today's agenda. Let's get started. I want to introduce the overview of the trend of open source de development. Recently, open source projects like Kubernetes, OpenStack, and so on tend to be developed with continuous testing at CI pipeline. Open Stack community used Zool to implement this pipeline. We can see FAT patch uh, on a queue to be merged into the main line of OpenStack like this here. Kubernetes community used Glow for doing the same thing. If proposing a single change with pull request or a patch, that change needed to, to pass the test set. Test test is here, which test is here. The test set consists of coding style check, build check, unit test, integration test, and easy test in general. Unit test is for testing the corresponding function. Integration test is for testing the combination of function or uh, integration with some specific services like database. It we test is verifying the behavior of the deployed system through API calls. For example, in Kubernetes CI system, we deploy Kubernetes cluster with kind, Kubernetes in Docker, and it we test run against the this deployed Kubernetes cluster through Kubernetes API calls. The same thing is implemented on OpenStack CI system also. We deploy small OpenStack cloud with DevStack, which is deployment tool for development and testing. Then EC test, which is called as Tempest, run against uh, this deployed OpenStack cloud. In general, easy test consists of multiple combinations like open, so open uh, sorry, operating system is Ubuntu or CentOS, IPv4 only or IPv6 also is supported. When proposing a single pull request to Kubernetes, many test jobs are operated like this. Uh, when uh, proposing uh, uh, OpenStack project, uh, there are a lot of test jobs operated like this. So we need to pass so many tests for uh, each single change before merging the change into the main line of both open source projects. Here, I need to explain some small tests which is related to this session main topic. On both Kubernetes and OpenStack community, we define small test sets from all easy tests. This small test set is called as conformance test on Kubernetes and it's called as interop test on Kubernetes. What is the difference between all easy test and small test sets. 
The system, those system has uh, two type of features. One is uh, core features and another uh, extensible features. And each uh, tests are uh, also implemented for corresponding features. Whole each test consists of test for both core feature and extensive feature. And this small uh, test set contains only core features, a test for core features. For example, create a hot API is one of core features of Kubernetes, and we expect that this feature should be available at any Kubernetes cluster. Each test of this core feature is implemented as a part of conformance test. On the other hand, we don't expect IPv6 support should be available on any Kubernetes cluster. We each test of I, this IPv6 feature is implemented as non-conformance test like this circle. On OpenStack committee does the same thing. We have uh, some uh, Tempest test for core feature and uh, we define those tests as interop tests. Uh, we can see FAT test or conformance test by checking actual E3 test code contain conformance level like this. This is actual E3 test code and uh, we can see this E3 test should run through the lifecycle blah blah blah. E3 test is a part of the conformance test with this level. And we can see uh, FAT is an interop test with interop code repository. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a Tempest test name. And if, uh, so the contained Tempest test name is uh, part of interop test. By using the, this continuous testing pipeline, we can detect uh, change which breaks the uh, existing features and block magic such in backward incompatible change into the mainline. That is huge merit. We can keep release readiness of open source software always in the community. Both community release new versions by due date. That means time-based release. So it is mandatory to keep software readiness always, anytime with this pipeline. And uh, the viewer don't need to take a look at the change which don't, don't pass the, those tests. That reduces code review workload from reviewers. That's also a big merit of this testing pipeline. Uh, so who can run CI test job? Uh, that depends on who submits the pull request on Kubernetes committee. Kubernetes community consists of this member structure, like non-member contributor, member reviewer, approver, sub-project owner. And if you are member or higher, like this, uh, if you are submitting a pull request to the Kubernetes, the test job are automatically operated for your own pull request. However, if you are a non-member contributor, test job are not run automatically, so you need to get a help from existing member to run test job for your own pull request. If you want to get involved more in the Kubernetes community, it is good to be a member in Kubernetes community. On the other hand, on OpenStack community, CI test job are automatically run for any contributors. So you don't need to get the help from the existing 
member to run test job for your own changes. There are some differences between both committee like this. I'm going to explain flag tests here for the main topic. Flag tests are tests which cause unstable results. That means flag tests pass successfully in most of test running, but uh, sometimes they are failed. Even if running the same test on the same code, the test results are different on flag test. For example, if some specific test in conformal tests is failed at 5%, Kubernetes community run five patterns of easy tests which contain conformal tests and the failure ratio becomes 25% for each single pull request. So 25% of pull requests cannot be operated successfully, then those pull requests are ignored by regular and the pull requests are never merged into the main line. Such situation make pull requests also frustrated. So I'd like to explain uh, some reason of flag test. One of the common uh, reason is timeout due to heavy workload at the testing pipeline. The testing pipeline are implemented on virtual machine, which are deployed at public clouds. When proposing a lot of projects at the same time from different developers, Heavy workload happens on network bandwidth and disk I.O. or something. Such workload makes testing operating time longer than usual, then run out the expected time in each test. It is a very common root problem just before code freeze endpoint. Many contributors try my try merging their own code into the main line before the code freeze of some specific version. Then heavy workload happens on the testing pipeline at the time. This situation is really frustrating because many developers want to merge their own projects into the main line, but the test job are failed due to unrelated reason and the waste time. Actually, in Kubernetes 1.20 development, one flag test happened on a pull request related to a conformant test due to this kind of workload. I'm picking up one request here. So in this case, uh, Go down here. So uh, here, let let column shows uh, failed test. Actually, this is a flag test. And at the time, uh, workload of CI pipelines has a pipe like this. Then uh, this is, this flag test happened due to the heavy workload. And uh, that make me difficult to decide this progress can be merged into the main line at the time. Actually, this progress itself is merged by different reviewer. So, and uh, another common uh, reason of flag test is lack of test isolation. It's a test calls API of each system and check the return response are expected or not in the, each test. Those operations take time, so the test, those tests are operated in the parallel to reduce testing operating time. However, some tests can affect another test result in operating in the parallel. For example, some test checks 
the source usage of some specific node by pulling a uh, workload from the test. If the other test put another workload in the parallel, actual resource usage becomes different from expected uh, in the some specific test. Then test itself is fail. Uh, to avoid such situation, we are implementing test isolation if necessary, but sometimes we forget to do that. This is a bug on test side. Another uh, simple reason is due to some website down. Testing pipeline uh, downloading a lot of software, a lot of library, a lot of container image from external website. If some website is down, we face the test failure on some test job. That's also a bad situation because we cannot solve this kind of issues directly because that is our that is out of our control. Other than those reasons, there are relevant bugs on software side and lack of like lack of uh, lack of lock, missynchronization between component and so on. We need to investigate those issues deeply and solve them. As I expected, I explained before, if break test happens, uh, part of test job is failed, then code reviewer is not made for the request and it is never matched into the main line. To avoid such situation, we can be done test job manually by hand. By reading recheck, on get it of OpenStack, test job are operated again. So same thing is implemented on Kubernetes side also. We can rerun test job by write, read, read, uh, written slash retest on Kubernetes GitHub. For example, I am going to pick up this change here. This is a very simple change. Uh, this is a type fix in some error message. And uh, this, this, in this request, test job should not fail at all because, because this is just a type fixing. And uh, this should not be affected the test result of a test job. But actually, but actually, this uh, request also needed to run test job with this slash retest. Then every test job are green now, like this. On the other hand, when uh, some test job are failed, some developer write slash retest without checking the detail of the test of failure. However, uh, sometimes those test failure are uh, due to the pull request itself without any frequency. That means uh, the pull request contains a bug. For example, a pull request contains invalid coding style, lack of imports, or a careless of unit tests, and so on. Uh, in this case, even if uh, we run the test job many times, for those pull requests, the test job are always failed. Unnecessary test job with cloud operating cost for implementing testing pipelines and also wait a developer time because developer need to wait for finishing the test jobs. To avoid running unnecessary test jobs, we need to check the reason of failed test jobs. In general, test job of coding style check, build test, and unit test tend to be stable. If those test jobs are failed, we should check uh, failure reason carefully, especially. Here's 
Here, I am going to explain how to solve flex tests. First thing we need to do is distinguish of flex tests. On Kubernetes, we can see the failure detail on this detail button here on the failed test job. Then, <clears throat> flow show which test was failed. In this case, API priority and fairness should ensure blah, blah, blah test was failed. Then, uh, we need to check our own pre-request, which is related to the failed test set or not. If the test is related, we need to fix uh, our mistake in the pull request. We should not rerun the test job before fixing it. If the pull request is not related to the failed test, the test failure, test failure should be due to fragrance without our mistake. We can rerun a uh, test job in this case. We can search the related issue on Kubernetes GitHub to see someone already submitted the same flag issue. Kubernetes community provide dashboard test grid to show how frequently test failure happened for each test. I'm going to show the, this test grid dashboard here. So uh, this is uh, Test uh, list of tests, easy test, and uh, we can see some red column here. Red column means uh, failed test, and in this case, API priority and fairness should blah 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 test is failed sometime here, right? So, and if we are clicking this red button, we can see the detail of this failed test, like this. OpenStack also provides uh, this kind of dashboard, OpenStack Health, and we can see the failure ratio here. So, uh, if we are facing uh, some Test failed, test failure, we can check the current situation of break tests on those dashboard. I said I said one of common break tests due to heavy workload of testing pipeline. And uh, one of the solution is running necessary testing job only for each pull request. If a pull request change unit test code only, we don't need to run integration tests and easily test at all, right? If another pull request change in document only in the code repository, we don't need to run unit tests E3 test and e integration test. So we should customize what test job should be operated for what kind of changing pull requests. On OpenStack, we are configuring testing job on each project. For example, this, is, this file is from OpenStack Nova projects and it's called the project repository contain .zool.yaml file for controlling testing job. And this test job contain relevant dash files, which special FAT, FAT changes don't need to be operated for each testing job. That means, in this case, test, testing job name is Nova DSVM multi node dash base and uh, relevant file is here and this uh, this uh, specifies a uh, uh, rst file which is a document file and uh, some hacking law 
locate, locate and test nova slash test, which is unit test and integration test. So if you are submitting a unit test change into the OpenStack Nova project, this Nova DSVM multi node dash base job is not operated at all. So uh, unit test and integration test changes uh, is merged into, ma into mainline without facing easily test fragrance at all. So we can, we can match those changes without fragrance. That is really good for developer. Another uh, solution is investigate deeply again and again. Yeah. Uh, that means if you are decided to solve flex test by yourself, that is great for the community. You will help many developer by solving flex tests. The first thing we need to do is investigation of logs, a lot of logs. We need to check uh, timestamps between uh, sending uh, API request from E3 test site and receiving uh, the API response from target system. The, then we get the necessary log from multiple components on the, this timestamp and uh, we, we should try to describe the failure scenario based on those logs. Sometimes the logs contain unrelated line because E3 test can be operated in parallel. So we should filter out those lines from, for concentrating on some specific API operation. When facing lack of log for investigation more, we needed to submit another pull request to add more log into easy test and the components. Such contribution also are very important to solve issues on production at the end of the day. Anyway, if you find some root problem and the solution, please submit a pull request for that. As I explained before, it is so hard to investigate each test failure that takes much effort and our time. Especially distributed computing system like Kubernetes and OpenStack, we need to investigate multiple component logs for a single operation because the single operation is implemented with combination of multiple components. In addition, we need to investigate the corresponding code of each component to check where the root problem happened on actual code. That is really hard investigation. More coverage of unit test and integration test can solve this drawback of E3 test. On E3 test job, we deploy actual system, then we run E3 test against the deployed system. On the other hand, unit test and integration test run against the code without actual deployed system. If detecting fragrance on unit test, we just need to investigate a small size of code. That reduces our effort and time to investigate root problems. As a result, many of small bugs can be fixed on unit test and integration test. Then we can reduce the whole failure ratio of E3 test. I love those two blocks. One is a particular test pyramid by Han Bokeh, Bok, and just say no more, just say no to more end to end by Mike Bokra. In just say no, no to more e to e block, uh, test should be implemented with pyramid structure like 70% is unit test, 20% uh, should be integration test, and 10% should be easy test on this balance, right? This blog is written five years ago, but uh, that is really good.
row. I recommend to read it once. So I'd like to summarize today's session. Uh, flake tests make developer frustrated and waste our time. That is very, very painful. And the, we can, we need to check the test failure detail before relearning a test job. Sometimes we make a bug without fragrance. But if you are, we are running a test job, uh, without check on this bug, uh, the test job will be failed again. So we need to check the test failure detail before running a test job. And it is good to run necessary testing job only at the pipeline for each change. We don't need to run uh, E2E test job for document change, right? So it is it is it is better to run necessary testing job only for reducing workload at the pipeline, and it is better to it is good to uh, improve test coverage for unit test and integration test instead of its e test uh, that can reduce uh, our investigation workload. And the other thing is, if you are solving a fake test, you can be a hero. Uh, I'd like to see this situation. Please uh, contribute if you are interested in solving fake tests. That's all today. And uh, thank you for attending this session.